What's up, Gator Nation? Welcome into the latest Gators Online show. It is orange and blue game week. It is Masters week. Uh, Nick has got to experience it. He's been on the grass in Augusta, and uh, he's going to be on the grass Saturday in Ben Hill Griffin Stadium as uh, Florida is back in the swamp for the spring game. 14 practices. Uh, they'll have number 14 here on this Thursday. And then uh, they'll be back in the swamp as uh, we get to see them come to a conclusion of spring camp and uh, a lot of new faces uh, that'll be on the field that you guys will get to see for the first time. Uh, so we will preview that game. Also discuss kind of what we learned from the second scrimmage as well. And uh, yeah, Nick's, Nick's repping with that hat this week. Spent uh, Spent a fair bit of money at the Masters. Got my little buddy here. All right. Oh, no. Um, got some baby gear. Okay, that was new. That, that was, was new. smart. Got some baby gear. Um, shout out to my guys, Andrew Silvershine and uh, Kyle Johnson. Andrew won uh, the the lottery this year and, and dragged us along with him. Uh, it's our second time. We went in nineteen. Uh, the last year, Tiger won. Nice. And uh, if yeah, if you win the lottery and you get a chance to go. Uh, it's incredible. I haven't been for a like a tournament day. We've got we've been at two practice rounds, but mm -hmm. just getting to go is awesome. Yeah, and this is this is an awesome week. Uh, obviously, for uh, I need. I thought Dan Mullen would do it for me. I need a Florida football coach to respect the Masters. Start <laughs> spring ball a week early. And it's like it's like a decade running where like moving day at the Masters. We also have the spring game. Well, well, they have the the Thursday spring game, but nobody liked that. I, I love, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> I was done, was done with spring football, and got to sit on the couch and watch the Masters the rest of the week. Loved the Thursday game. Shout out to Jimmy Mack. Yeah, I mean, if we were, if if that was the case, we'd be out in the swamp tonight instead of uh, talking about the game right now. So, uh, but nonetheless, it's back on a Saturday. I think. Most of Gator Nation outside of uh, the media boys and girls and, and Masters fans uh, like that it's on a Saturday, like that they can be back on, on a weekend, and a ton of stuff going on uh, on campus this weekend. So it's a great weekend to be in Gainesville for all the different UF sporting events and obviously uh, being able to to watch the Masters, uh, which comes to conclusion on Sunday. But look, we're, we're here to talk football. We're here to talk these two teams that will be split up. Uh, and uh, I think they'll have a draft. Uh, maybe Nick and I will give uh, what our top 10 picks would be if uh, if we were selecting. But uh, they do try to s split it up so that there is some competition there. And uh, I, I I like that personally, Nick. Um, you know, it's not necessarily straight ones versus twos, um, but there is somewhat of a draft format and they, and they get to, you know, they get to get their good on good going. Yeah, I mean, the spring game is more choreographed or can be more choreographed than WrestleMania. Um, you can create the rules. It's it's not like a legally sanctioned, NCAA-sanctioned game. If you wanted to <laughs> say, hey, we're going to play with seven guys on defense and 11 on offense, good luck, and we're going to score 100, you can do that. If you wanted to only run a seven on seven and give the big men a day off. You can do that. If you want to only run red zone, you can do that. And we've uh, seen some coaches just uh, basically have a practice on a uh, their spring game. Brutal, brutal stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like last year was tough. Last year was tough to watch. Uh, just like a, a sloppy game. What is it? 10 to seven. Uh, to got seven. nobody excited. Lane Kiffin trolled you. Um, spring's tough though. Like, do you want to have a, a big game? you know, a big offensive scoring game. You can orchestrate that. Yeah. Um, but with how bad Florida's defense was last year, is that going to make anyone feel better? You're like, oh, my God, the sure. defense still stinks. You have a bunch of new coaches and they stink. So it's an interesting position to be in because in the spring, every winning play brings up questions about, well, why did this happen? Um, yeah. Is the other unit bad? So there's a give and a take. But uh, for me, the spring game really is is the reward for the team. Uh, it's 15 practices over a month and you get to go out and you're still hitting the same guys, but you get to go out in the swamp 
uh, play in front of fans for the first time, get that experience of running out. So to me, spring games, um, there's a lot of questions. It's the first time that the fans are going to see you. Uh, but for me, it's mostly just a reward for the players. It's the 15th practice of 15, uh, and you get to go out and really – uh, you know, just play football in front of fans in the stadium. So, yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see how they handle it in terms of do we want to have another 17 point spring game or do we manufacture um, some big plays? You can completely manufacture a DJ lagway to Aiden Mizell 60 yard bomb, 70 yard bomb based on who you're putting on the field. Now, the players still have to execute it. Um, yeah, but but you can you can draw up some ball plays uh, to give you some highlights. And and they took a shot to Mizell, I think, in the spring game last year. No? But it did sting get executed. Yeah. So, execute. I mean, maybe maybe you go DJ to tank? Maybe. That, that, that'll, get him, that'll get him riled up. Uh, yeah. Look, Billy said they're going to make it entertaining. Uh, and... You know, it's interesting the point about that you make about the defense thing because that was also relevant last year in last year's spring game. They were coming off of a bad defensive season and in some way only giving up 17 offensive points could have been looked at as a positive. And I'm sure in the coaching staff's mind, they probably, you know, like some of that. But off on the offensive side, I'm sure they wanted more points on the board. But there is an appetite for it. Uh, they've got the playmakers and they've got the speed to be able to do it. And even though these teams are going to get drafted, they are going to get evenly divided. You are going to try to get some good on good happening instead of a twos versus the ones or ones versus the two scenario, which will, there will be some of that. But as Nick said, you can manufacture some big plays, some big moments, some opportunities for the offense, uh, you know, to to get the fans excited with a with a huge bomb or a or a trick play or a reverse or something like that, and uh, I'm all for the razzle dazzle, Nick. Yeah, like hey, I, flicker. Like, hey, like I I appreciate uh, Jeremy Crawshaw fake punt. Unbelievable that we haven't gotten that in three years. Um, Why not do it now? Complete neglect. Just they should just do tests. like four <laughs> fake punts in the game. Just put them all on tape. Um, I'm like, love Chris Doering. Uh, think he <laughs> is a great representation for uh, Florida, the for the University of Florida and the Gator football program. But don't need to see him catching passes. Like, didn't think that was fun. Who else was uh, in that game? There was I think Lawrence play. Wright. Lawrence yeah. Wright showed up for a year. Just like, show up. Like, I don't need you catching balls. What if what if they had them in full full gear? I don't think they. What, what if they could still play? Chris Dorian looks like he still could. He probably can. Um, but you want another outside see... receiver? But I think he's lost a step or two. Looks great, Chris. You look great, but I think you might might have lost a step or two in the past. You know, thirty. Years. I mean, he could he could beat you on a route. But yeah, 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 for sure. But you you want to see my zone. But I also or, watched or him. I also watched him swing, and I think I could get a fastball by him. Ooh. We might have to make that happen. We might have to make that happen. Yeah. But, but you don't want to see Chris go deep on a route. You want to see one of these receivers cut it loose, make a big play. Yeah. Um, you know, they're they're gonna establish the run. They're gonna give some of these, they're gonna feature these backs because they got a great backfield. Um, and I'm excited to see that. But uh, and, and we'll get into some specific players to watch. But uh, as as we go into Saturday, Nick, what are some of the biggest storylines, themes uh, that you're following and kind of want to see from this team? Um, it, it, there, Well, there's one. Like, listen, I always say this. Um, I have an opinion, uh, and, and in my opinion is based on people I talk to, what I see. Um, I don't think Florida's offensive line got better. I think I've made that very clear on this podcast, <laughs> abundantly clear. Uh, we keep hearing that the pocket's cleaner, the line is better. Um, I, I'm I, I'm calling cap. I guess I got I don't I don't believe it. So maybe I'll see that. 
uh, on Saturday at one o'clock. Maybe I'll see that the line's improved. I also will go into the game w- taking it for what it is because you're out uh, multiple starters in, in Austin Barber and Cam Wade's could potentially be a starter. If not a starter, at least your your third offensive tackle, your swing offensive tackle who will play could play left or right. Um, I'm interested to see some of the younger guys. I just put a story about about returners that I think have earned bigger roles. Um, you know, uh, DK, Khalil Jackson. What do those guys look like at, at outside? I know what Trey Wilson is looks like. I think he's even gotten better um, in spring going into year two. The defensive line. Um, in my opinion, if the defensive line is not winning consistently, then we might be overhyping them based on what my opinion is of the offensive line. So I would think that I'm looking for the defensive line to win consistently on Saturday unless we can uh, create the scenarios that we were just talking about, Zach. Um, yeah. I see our chat's asking about Andy Jean. Like, I don't know that Andy Jean will play or what kind of role he'll have on Saturday. Yeah, He's missed yeah. the entire spring with a hamstring. So, uh, and I think, and, and I think we've been told and we think that they'll go after another wide receiver. And that's not, you know, condemning Andy Jean or Aiden Mizell, Tank or TJ Abrams. I think they want another outside receiver. Tank and Abrams are very similar players to Eugene Wilson. And Eugene Wilson's coming off the field when he taps his helmet and asks for a water break and that's it. Um, <laughs> so I think you're looking for another outside receiver. Um, I, I'm looking for Keon zipper, just looking for him. Like, can you do any, can, can you run? What, what are you doing? Um, he's been out all spring. I mean, he had surgery. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't expect 18 months him. ago, 20 months ago. You think he'll play Saturday? I don't think so. I don't think he'll play Saturday. I'm looking for signs of life, like an APB. Wow. I'm putting out an all-points bulletin. <laughs> I see. Are you still here? What are you doing? Um, and then the secondary. I, 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 You and I keep talking about how, how much better that secondary room is. Um, some credits Will Harris. I think the guys they brought in through the transfer portal are going to be huge for Florida. I think Devin Moore, the best, avail- av- the best ability is availability. I don't know if you can hear that knocking on wood. He's been available. Um, I think the secondary is super athletic, um, and 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 I'm I'm interested or I, I'm excited for fans to see and for them to show what we've seen this spring uh, with their growth and their development. No doubt, and obviously, I think that when you look at this team, you know the the quarterback position. There's a lot of intrigue there. One with Mertz coming back. And the arrival of DJ Lagway, I think, uh, want to see for where both of those guys are at. One, how much better Merch now looks, uh, maybe now with an offseason under his belt and now being the full-time starter, knowing this offense, having a, a season with Florida. He is coming off of the injury, so that's, you know, I don't think that's going to be anything that we need to monitor. But, uh, you know, is, is he able to push the ball down, feel more? Uh, show shows you know take some more shots you, you know we would expect we're also going to see somewhat of vanilla game plan at times so they're not going to show too much or do anything too flashy but just his accuracy his efficiency leading the offense now in year two as the starter uh, that's something to watch and look for and then conversely with lagway this is a guy that has come in and obviously right away kind of been thrust into the backup role He's worked it throughout the spring. Um, He's had his moments in scrimmages where he's made some plays and thrown some touchdowns, uh, but he's also had some picks as well and had some struggles. So he's had two times now where he's been in the swamp in a scrimmage setting, had those ups and downs. This is his third time at it, but it's going to be in front of fans. How does he look now? You know, under it won't be under the lights, but on on a much bigger stage, and with a lot of eyes on him, I, I think that's something that not just myself and Nick, but everybody's going to be looking to see. Um, but also how he plays, like if he's able to avoid turnovers and play a pretty, uh, you know, clean game, that, that that's going to be certainly a sign of progress. If he does have some bad plays, it's also not going to be the end of the world because he is still a true freshman, uh, learn a lot. And they're throwing a lot at him. So, uh, I want to see where he's at. I want to see where a lot of these other new faces are at. I mean, we're talking about 27 guys 
that are going to be making their debut in orange and blue. Now, some not all those 27 will be on the field. Obviously, guys like Miles Graham and some others are out, but uh, the majority of them will be playing for the first time. That's transfers and freshmen. So seeing those guys that are going to be probably making an immediate impact this year from the starters uh, like Asa Turner uh, to some of the freshmen that that we get to see for the first time uh, besides just Lagway. So uh, there's a lot of intrigue there, and then there's also – some new coaching that's happening. Uh, you know, it, it is still a scrimmage between two split Florida teams. So um, this is not a, a full scope of what we're going to see on Saturday in kind of a competitive setting. These coaches are going to be going against each other. You're going to be have different guys calling plays on Saturday than will be during the season. But nonetheless, it is still three new defensive coaches on, on that side of the ball. You've got a, a new offensive line coach as well. You've got Russ Calloway uh, doing a little bit more uh, this spring, and he probably will be calling plays for one of the teams on Saturday. So there's a lot there to to watch. Uh, you know, you'll probably have Ron Roberts calling one of the defenses and Austin Armstrong calling the other. Um, so, you know, Nick and I can maybe find out who's calling which, but that's something to, to maybe look for and watch. And, and there's just – that's some intrigue there for me, um, but I, I want to see how that operation looks um, and certainly what type of progress on the defensive side of the ball has been made too. Uh, and then DJ Lagway. Yep. That's uh, I think he's number one on everybody's list. <laughs> um, like we keep saying, like, listen, this is Graham Mertz's team, right? Um, but you can't deny the talent that Lagway has, the potential that he has. What if he lives up to his potential? What that would mean for the University of Florida, for a football program that has been on a, ro- a vomit inducing roller coaster since Tim Tebow graduated? Um, would love to get off that roller coaster and just find something steady, a monorail, please. <laughs> um, so, it's interesting. I think. I mean, I just DJ just, has to have a role this fall. Yeah. Uh, it won't be. I don't think a major role. I think you need to get him in every game because if he is what you think he is and what he can be, he won't be in college for four years. Yeah. yeah and yeah. if he isn't, and he doesn't start, he won't be at your college for four years. He'll go somewhere else. So there's no point in redshirting him. He needs to play. Yeah. You need to have some design packages, and that goes on the coaching staff. Now, once DJ gets into the game, it's on him to execute. But as a coaching staff, you have to. It's on you to find creative ways or just ways to get him into the game sure. and to get him uh, a chance, an opportunity to make an impact. And that's with a lot of the freshmen, right? It's not just yeah. DJ. You know, um, there are some guys that if they're good enough and showing it in practice, like, in this day and age with the transfer portal, um, as, as Napier has said, you know, the, the tape doesn't lie and the players know who's supposed to be playing. So if you've got a young guy that's earning that, that playing time, like you're going to have to give it to him. Um, so we'll, we'll get into some specific players that we want to watch this Saturday um, and, and some, some more kind of specifics to watch with those guys. Uh, before we do that, I want to let you guys know about a couple of uh, uh, things that we got going on on the promo side. Uh, we will start, as we do always, uh, with MyPerfectFranchise.net. If you're ready to leave the corporate rat race for the American dream, looking for a side hustle while working your current job, wanting to diversify, build wealth, and or leave a legacy, Andy can help. He's a franchise consultant as well as a franchise owner and helps people find franchises that fit their skill sets, financial requirements, time to commit, and more. His services are 100% free, and he's here to help if you have any questions about business ownership. You can learn more and contact Andy anytime at myperfectfranchise.net or calling or texting him at 404-973-9901. And Nick, I mentioned all the new faces that will be out there on Saturday. Uh, also some returners that I think that we want to see as well. 
uh, that have kind of maybe stepped into bigger roles or maybe we just didn't get to see a lot of last year. And Nick, you wrote about some of those guys at Gators Online. Um, and I want to encourage everybody that's listening to this show live, uh, which we appreciate, and those who are going to come back and watch this or listen to it on the uh, different streaming services, you guys are in luck. Because if you are not subscribed to Gators Online, we have a promo going on right now for listeners of the Gators Online show. Uh, if you go to sign up on, on Gators Online uh, and you, you go to the sign up page, if you put in the promo code UF1, you will get two months of access to the site for just a dollar just for listening to the show, uh, which we appreciate. So again, if you're not subscribed to Gators Online, you want to read all the spring game coverage that we have this Saturday, all the recruiting visitors that are going to be on campus. Uh, Portal guy Todd and his staff are about to have a bunch of transfers on campus. Uh, a lot of premium stuff that you guys are going to want to read. So if you're not subscribed, uh, use the promo code uh, UF1 when you go to sign up and you can get two months for just a dollar. And uh, we'll have a ton of coverage on Saturday pregame. After the game, uh, we'll highlight, obviously, some guys that stand out. But we also have some guys that we're kind of keying, keying in on going into this game. Uh, we've already mentioned some of them. Uh, we don't have to ha rehash Lagway. Uh, everybody knows that that's a guy that we want to see. Um, Nick, you can go offense or defense. You can go newcomer or you know maybe a guy that's a returner that's stepping into a bigger role. Um, but who are some guys that jump out at you immediately that you really want to see this Saturday? Um, obviously DJ, um, super talented. He, he struggled a little bit at times, you know, they're throwing a lot at him, um, this spring. So obviously DJ is a guy I want to see. Um, I would like to see, um, I think the biggest one that I was super excited about was miles Graham. Unfortunately with his back surgery, yeah. Um, it is out, but I think he's, he's a guy that I will be excited to see when fall camp comes back around, uh, pup Howard. Um, I'm really excited to see DJ Douglas, Asa Turner. Um, and, and then Caleb Banks. I think Caleb Banks is a guy who there was so much hype around Joey Slackman. It's not that Slackman's bad or anything, but there was so much hype about Slackman and getting him in the portal because he was the number one ranked defensive lineman in the portal. Um, I think that we kind of forgot about Caleb Banks, who this time last year, I was thinking, hey, he's a project. It's going to take him a couple of years to really make an impact. And then he comes out last year and makes an impact and becomes a regular player and a, and a dependable player. And I think he's taken another step. When we're out there and I'm watching the defensive line, it seems like the rest of the room is almost looking to him um, as a leader and a guy, I think, who who has really progressed and, and made a big um, a big jump from – year i guess it's his year two to year three but year one to year two in florida's defensive system um and then i'll, I'll stop there i'm stealing all the players uh i'm not gonna give you any time zach so i'll stop there but uh there are more players for sure yeah we i mean we can go back and forth um i'm, I'm really disappointed that you did not mention jeremy I mean, it's just I, I guess you just assumed you, you, what's understood doesn't need to be explained so you just Facts. Yeah, everybody already understands that. Um, man, where I mean, where can we go? I mean, well, I don't have to limit it to, to anybody. Um, this isn't a list of five or a list of ten, but um, I've got a list. Um, I wish we could see Justice Boom, but I don't think we're going to Nick. Um, I don't. I, I he's not going to be out there. I, I don't think Jordan Castell is going to be out there. Um, a lot of these guys that have been non-contact, so. Um, we'll miss some now because of Boone. Uh, there's a lot of guys at that F spot that we'll be watching for, but I think number one on my list and a lot of others is LJ McCray. Uh, our first chance getting to see the five star edge player that the Gators signed. Um, he's, uh, he's a guy that's kind of been raved about by the staff. He really impressed them in the off season workouts. Uh, Ron Roberts w w was just really high on the guy uh, and, and said for, for a fact that the guy's going to make uh, an impact as a freshman. So getting to see what he can do at the F spot, especially with 
Boone not playing, it's going to be really big for him. I think sticking at that D-line edge position, obviously TJ Searcy, it's Searcy season, right? I mean, you got uh, Princely Uman Mielin, who's moved on. You've got Jack Pyburn, who's coming off the ACL. He's not going to be playing on Saturday. Uh, this has been a huge opportunity for Cersei this spring to kind of rep with the first team and kind of take over that outside linebacker spot. He made a huge play in the scrimmage uh, last Saturday, which we'll get into. But uh, getting to see him, also getting to see George Gums at that spot as well. But really, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how Cersei's kind of built on that freshman All-SEC year. And then another guy who earned freshman All-SEC honors, Kelby Collins, he's now moved from that F spot uh, and that edge position to now defensive line. So seeing how he's looking there, he's playing that same end spot as Caleb Banks and Slackman, but you know he's making that transition to um, to N. And we've heard that Collins has, you know, the the double teams and some of the stuff that he faces at that spot has been a little bit new to him. So maybe seeing how he does that and some of the guys that will be laying those blocks on him. You got a lot of changes on the offensive line two new tackles that they've brought in from the transfer portal who are probably both going to be your starters on Saturday, depending on how they split up, um, you know, the draft and everything like that. But Crenshaw Dixon and Devin Manuel, you know, if they didn't have those guys this spring, you'd be really young at those tackle spots uh, with Austin Barber and Cam Waits being out. So those guys get a huge opportunity on Saturday. Uh, you've also got new faces at the guard. Uh, position with Damian George and, and uh, Najee Harris. So I want to see how that looks. You know, Nick, I would imagine we'll probably get the starting five together, right? I mean. Yeah, you know, I think you should. I, I mean, regardless of how the draft goes, like maybe you draft the. Well, they're not. You know, they're not. The players way that Billy said like it, that. they're not really drafting teams. It's like they've picked teams. The coaching staff has. And sure. then they drafted the rest of the organization. Like Katie Turner, Bree, uh, Bree Wade will be on teams. Uh, sure, the strength sure. coaching staff will be on teams. So like, it's not necessarily they they were like, "Hey Graham, you get a captain, and uh, you know Shamar, you're a captain." Now pick yeah, it's like the All Star games, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pick sixty guys. Um, that you know that would be fun, but you might get unbalanced teams. At the end of the day, the spring game is still a practice as part of spring camp and the coach and staff um, wants to get something out of it more than just, you know, the reward uh, for the players at the end of camp. So there's still a lot of control over the rosters sure. that the coaching staff has. And with that being said, so you're, you're going to see the first team offensive line with one unit, second team yeah. offensive line with another. And so seeing what those guys look like, how that unit plays is, is obviously Key that is one of the biggest storylines uh, with this with this group and with this team and um, I, I think sticking with the offensive side of the ball, you know, I'm, there's some more young guys that I want to see the two running backs, uh, Daniels and Baugh. I, I think they've both yeah. impressed from what we've heard in the spring. I mean, Jaden Bob had three touchdowns in the scrimmage last Saturday. He went off. Uh, Daniels has been very impressive, and then. Uh, you know, we wrote about it this week at Gators Online, but the speed that this team has, and I think two guys specifically, you already mentioned them once on this pod, Nick, but Mizell, and then the new freshman, Tank Hawkins, Mr. 10-3 in the 100. That's uh, moving. That's moving. He's probably the fastest guy on the team. So getting to see him for the first time in a Florida Gator uniform, uh, maybe he you know gets loose uh, on, on one of these deep routes or – they just get him the ball in space, and we can really get to see that speed in action. So those are some of the ones that uh, jump out at me the most. Um, did any others I didn't mention, Nick, that, I, that I, didn't, I didn't take from you? Aaron Gates. I didn't mention Aaron him. Gates. Aaron Gates. TJ Abrams. Gates, man. Um, I, I, would, I think it will be mostly ones versus ones. Um, I think the defensive line is certainly deeper than the offensive line. Um, so, you know, when I talk about defensive line winning, when you go twos versus ones, I think that could, that could be, yeah, uh, has potential to be ugly. Um, so maybe don't throw DJ Lagway there. Um, I think the worst thing Florida that could happen for Florida is if you don't put DJ Lagway in positions to be successful, like if you just throw DJ with the second team offense 
versus the second team defense. I think the second team defense is much deeper and better than the second team offense right now. Well, and if um, you put if you put them with the second team offense against the first team defense, then no, no, don't do that. Y- you might just get, don't just don't yeah. do that. Yeah, like that. You need, I good, on, you need like, good on good. <clears throat> yeah, I understand like turning over every rock and being like, hey, let's create some s- scenarios. That one should be thrown away immediately. <laughs> Big DJ Lagway. Don't do it. Man, the second team offense versus Florida's first team. Well, that's what he's defense. been doing in the don't scrimmages. Do that. That's what Just he's been doing. Don't in the scrimmages. do that when the well, the fans aren't watching those scrimmages. Sure, sure, sure. So, like, knock nor are down we, nor are we. <laughs> yeah, so knock him down to build him back up. But for heaven's sake, don't let DJ Lagway be the second team offensive quarterback versus the first team defense when SEC Plus is streaming the game and will log it and catalog it online forever. Don't do that. Be smarter than that. Yep. And and I don't believe that they've done that. Uh, most years it's been it's been good on good, meaning yeah. even 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 uh, squads. Uh, so it's the starters going against the starters, backups, second team going against the second team. So um, you know more players. I mentioned them, but there's a lot of intrigue there in the secondary, um, right? Like. First of all, the the competition at star, really the competition at safety. I mean, we know that, or we think that it's going to be Asa Turner and Jordan Castell, but Jordan Castell was the first to tell us, "Hey, man, we're all playing." Like, I, I don't know who's, I don't know who's going to be playing next to me. I don't know. Uh, so, DJ Douglas, who made uh, probably the play of the day in in the scrimmage on Saturday, um, Bridges, uh, you know. Turner, obviously, and then uh, you know you got Bryce Thornton there as well, who started the last four games uh, of 2023. So there's a lot of uh, competition at that spot. You've got Jason Marshall back, Devin Moore. Um, you know, uh, Grimsley is the new addition to the cornerback room along with Foster. Um, so uh, there's just a lot of they're, they're they're deep in the secondary. You know, they're, they're and they're I think they're probably going to have a healthy rotation at every single spot. Um, so do maybe do we see any of those uh, newcomers at the safety spot that have been playing safety, Douglas and or Bridges, do we see them at star in the spring game? Mm-hmm. That's something to watch for. I, I asked Aaron Gates, and he said that they haven't really come over there. It's, it's yeah. just been him and, Den, uh, and Denson and Josiah Davis. Um, and there's another, there's another um, player that they have in that position too, but it, so far, it's just been Douglas or Bridges. Now, hey, but both those guys have been making plays at safety too. Um, but you know that is something to monitor. Maybe they wait till fall camp to to experiment with that. Yeah, I think you've played Aaron Gates everywhere, and and Billy Napier has mentioned it. You know, kind of trying to narrow a focus for a player, especially a young player. You're you have not come in, and Aaron Gates wasn't able to do anything. He was off to the side in the pit jogging and and trying to rehab his his knee injury so to ask him to play outside then they moved him to safety and then now you're moving him to a third different spot and he's athletic enough to do that but it's like narrow his focus take take the peas off the plate scrub the mashed potatoes off the plate just let him have a steak and, and focus on <laughs> eating that steak and not have to do too much and with Douglas and Bridges, you have years of tape and film of them playing both safety and star. You know what they can do at star. They're 23, 24 years old. They'll be fine only doing safety if you need them to be like, hey, we need you to play um, star in the fall. Cool. Yeah. But you're getting a chance now for Aaron Gates and Shreve Denson to just focus in on one spot and, and get all of the reps there. You know what you have in the older guys. Let Gates, who's now played everywhere in the secondary, uh, and Denson, who I think was mainly there last year, um, kind of just focus in. And then you're going to get a bunch of tape and, and let them know. Yeah. And yeah. they'll let you know if they can handle it or if you need to move one of the older guys down. That's a great point. And, I mean, you're trying to replace Jaden Hill at that star spot, which is one of the most difficult positions to play in Florida's defensive scheme, if not the most. Um, and so that's, you know, that, that's something that you've been trying to figure out this whole camp. And, you know, this is really going to be 
kind of your not your final answer on it, but you're going to find out what you have going into the fall based on what you see in the spring game. And if those guys play well and grade out fine and, and, and make a bunch of plays, then maybe you don't need to move any of those guys over. Um, based on where you're weak at, that might kind of dictate who, who goes where. Um, but just that whole secondary in general, they've made plays all camp. They've made plays in both scrimmages. They've come up with picks. They've come up with pass breakups. Um, so is that something that we see more of on Saturday? And um, you mentioned it too. Um, I think that was one guy, Nick. But but you know you're going to have Shamar James and Derek Wingo probably not play in this game. So this is a huge opportunity for Pop Howard. Uh, obviously, you're going to see Manny Nunnery out there, but a lot of these other you know young linebackers that they have, Jaden Robinson. Um, being able to step in and, and get a lot of playing time in the spring game. But I'm really looking forward to Pup. Yeah, I think coming into the year, I thought Nunnery, obviously, a ton of experience. He came back after going into the portal probably for a reason. Um, but I thought Miles Graham and, and Pup Howard would be the two guys that, or at least two guys that I predicted, thought would get a ton of run and, and an opportunity to win starting um, a starting job. Um, so that'll be interesting to me to see how, how much has Pup taken advantage of all of the reps he's getting because Wingo, Shamar and Miles are all out. Um, and, uh, it's sometimes I guess, you know, it's good to finish second in recruiting. Yeah. End up, end up finishing first with, uh, Pup and Grimsley. Yeah. DeAndre Robin too, baby. Oh, and DeAndre. Yeah. He's someone who I really haven't seen a ton from uh, you know big big recruit um star star wise but really haven't heard when asking about defensive line when talking to people really haven't heard uh much about him it's a it's yeah a man deep I've, room well and i've had to a i asked some guys specifically when they the last yeah. came and they, and they just and they i mean you can just hear um like the work ethic like the approach but he's a young defensive lineman that's an early enrollee and that's just that's a hard. That's a hard to come in and make an impact at that position. Um, yeah, there's some some guys come in and you know when we're talking to coaches, sources, players, whoever. Um, there's some guys, some names that, that you just hear and you hear them over and over, and you don't have to ask about them. People just keep bringing them up, and then there's some names that you have to like every you know after like two weeks of camp, you're like, oh, this guy's on the team. Let me ask about him. Yeah. But again, nothing sure. ever bad happens in the spring. Um, but it might be telling that you have to ask rather than sure. the name being presented to you over and over. And as you know, the farther away you play from the ball, the easier it is to get on the field as a freshman. Um, and why you see those wide receivers and DBs and safeties like Jordan Castell and Bryce Thornton, uh, get on the field right away. But man, if you're playing on that line of scrimmage and especially on the interior, you got to be a dog um, and you got to really come in and, and kind of be in, in the physical shape that can kind of take uh, what it what's required to kind of hold your own in the trenches there. And then also being able to pick up the technique and the playbook. I mean, it's just so much that's required of the developmental position. So um, but this is a this is a game where those guys you know, once they get matched up uh, against the backups, it's an opportunity for them to get in the game and make plays, um, especially uh, once you get with the third team units. So a lot of freshmen out there that you will see for the first time, transfers as well, uh, making their UF debut. Um, so uh, we will have full coverage at Gators Online. Um, you know, make sure that you guys stay locked. If you uh, aren't subscribed, again, Take advantage of the fact that you are tuning into this show. When you go to sign up, use the promo code UF1 to get two months of access for just $1. You can get all of our coverage. Nick's thoughts, our observations from the field, um, just, just a lot that you guys want to take advantage of. So uh want to get into another ad read real quick, and then we will uh, also kind of wrap up this show discussing what we learned from the second scrimmage. Uh, and that and that happened in the swamp last Saturday. We're still a little bit removed, but a lot of plays that happened um, that I think that you guys will want to 
uh, hear about. So uh, before we do that, I want to give a shout out to my uh, Prairie Dental Center. Uh, the doctor is a UF grad who's practiced in Gainesville for three decades and developed a deep understanding of how to diagnose and treat various dental problems along with advanced skills and knowledge to provide more effective care to his patients. If you're having dental concerns, just need a cleaning, Prairie Dental Center offers a wide range of options to meet your needs. Give their office a call at 352-3431-373-3431. Uh, Tell them Gators Online sent you and your new patient exam will be free. And uh, we've hinted at some plays, some guys that stood out, but the Gators did have a scrimmage since the last time that we had an episode uh, and want to get into some more specifics that happened uh, there. And, you know, hearing from some of the sources that we spoke to, Nick, and obviously from Billy Napier, it sounded like it was uh, the Eugene Wilson show on last Saturday in the Swamp. And I think that's music to the ears of a lot of Gator fans. Yeah, it's I mean, Eugene Wilson, uh, I joked with him, um, you know, they all wear those catapult uh, GPS tracking monitors. I wanted to know what the exact number of miles it was he ran in pre-snap motion last year. Um, I think that'll have to until somebody steps up and proves that they can be a threat. Um, you're going to have to continue pre-snap motioning Trey. Um, just to get him off, to let Graham see what defenses are doing. Um, so I think he's a player that not only Zach and I and, and probably the rest of the Florida coaching staff have really looked at as a guy who they need to continue progressing, but a guy who has progressed. Um, and, and then I think the other two um, right now, we've wrote about it, we've talked about it a bunch, Khalil Jackson um, and Tremere DK are the guys who would be the one, two, three right now. The rest of that wide receiver room, there's opportunity. Marcus Burke, uh, it's never been about his athleticism or his skill. Uh, he's super talented. Um, he's a guy who probably just has to get out of his own way. Uh, I think he has matured a lot in the four years he's been here. Um, but again, it's like you can have all the talent in the world. You have to be able to put it together uh, to earn the coaching staff's trust for them to throw you in on Saturday. Um, have, have you done that this spring? Uh, we'll see Saturday based on how many, how much he plays, if he's, if he's done that. And then that would be a guy who could ease your mind about who is going to play outside as well. Uh, as you look for somebody to take the attention off Trey Wilson. Sure. And you know, you're losing Ricky Pearsall, but you're also losing Caleb Douglas as well. So yeah, um, they need we don't talk about that as much, up. probably because, because Caleb only played what four or five games last year before the injury, but well, and Caleb that's, Douglas and that's was... what and when that would open the door for uh, you know Khalil Jackson to become a full time starter, yeah. and then Eugene Wilson as well. Um, but so they kind of had already, I not figured it out, but dealt with you know losing him. But it, it is still something that um, you know they're they're dealing with because you know from a depth standpoint, there's just not as many proven players now that Douglas is out of the picture. So um, you know having Eugene and and DK and, and Khalil Jackson as well, kind of as Nick said, you know separate themselves. You know Marcus Burke, we've heard a lot of great things about him this spring, and he's a guy that really transformed his body in the in the off season. Didn't make as many plays in the second scrimmage, but he made a lot in that first one. Um, you know, I mentioned Jaden Baugh and him uh, having uh, three rushing touchdowns and, and one of his best practices since he uh, enrolled early at Florida. But really, you know, all the running backs had a really great day. Um, Montreal Johnson um, kind of leading the pack there. But, you know, I've heard, Nick, that he's – Really, you know, last year he showed more as a pass catcher um, and, and kind of had his best year from that standpoint. I think we're going to see more of that, especially with Trevor Etienne out of the picture. Um, you know, he had 30 receptions last year. Uh, that number should be even more uh, based on kind of what he's been doing so far in the scrimmages uh, and being a threat out of the backfield. And then, you know, they're deep. You know, you got Trey on Webb. Uh, the the two running backs, Bond and Daniels, uh, Jacoby Jackson was a, was a guy that made plays uh, in the scrimmage. He had two touchdowns, uh, including a passing touchdown from DJ Lagway. So uh, he showed up uh, last Saturday. And then the secondary, um, you know, I mentioned 
uh dj douglas having the play of the day uh that was courtesy of tj cersei who made a uh a batted pass uh from his outside linebacker spot that went up in the air dj douglas picked it off uh brought it back to the house uh and then he had some other uh plays that he made in the scrimmage multiple pass breakups it, it was kind of his you know coming out party uh this spring as a gator in camp so uh that's that's a positive for Florida, uh, you know, the staff has always kind of really been high on DJ since he enrolled or should I say transferred in. And um, he really showed up in the last scrimmage, as did multiple players. Um, Jakeem Jackson had a pick. Bridges had a pick. Castell had a pick. Uh, we were told that Sharif Denson also played really well. So just a lot of guys stepping up, Nick. And we all know the lack of interceptions last season it's been well documented how florida wants to create more turnovers will harris said it's been a point of emphasis this spring and it's shown up in the scrimmages you know devin moore had a pick and josiah davis also had an interception in the first scrimmage they had four interceptions in the last one so um look fans want to see some plays and some points made on the offensive side of the ball but I think defensively, they want to have that show up once again on Saturday, and they want to get some some turnovers and some picks. So um, we'll see if that shows up and if the defense can just generate more turnovers as a whole. I mean, Nick, they only had seven last year, which was last in the SEC and second to last nationally. And two of the turnovers that they had came on special teams. Um, so they only forced five turnovers as a defense. And that is something that has to happen more of uh, in 2024. Yeah, and I almost, I almost like, um, I almost like when when you mentioned you're running through the picks, and I'm like, oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. And then you're remembering like, oh, that means Florida's throwing them too, you know, which goes to the double edged sword of spring. But like, I'm not worried about Graham Mertz. Yeah, no, Mertz only had one pick, uh, so it's, that's worth noting. Uh, I'm. Not super worried about DJ Lagway having the the picks either, uh, a little bit, but like like I said, there it's he's going against like the, the starting curve. defense, you know part, what I mean? Part of the learning curve, yeah. And, and it's like Billy Napier mentioned it, you know, you gotta know when to hold him, know when to fold him, but like DJ Lagway doesn't know that yet because I, I mentioned like if you go and watch like Noel Devine and Chris Rainey's highlight tapes from high school, they are just faster than everyone and they would run 30 yards the wrong way to make 15 people miss to gain five uh dj lagway has been the biggest strongest and fastest player on every football field he's stepped on the last two years um and you've got to take that away from him and putting him against the second or putting him with the second team offense against the first team offense there's no better way to get that out of your mind of hey man those windows that you tried to squeeze it into, those linebackers in Texas uh, are a little bit slower than the ones you're going to face in the SEC. Hey, uh, if you're not choosing to run right away, good luck scrambling away. TJ Searcy is bigger than you uh, and and right around your speed, and he will chase you down. Um, yeah. So that, that, that learning that it takes a while for someone like DJ Lagway who could scramble – for 20 seconds in a play in high school and either find a guy that's open or run for, you know, a 40 yard gain. Um, you have to learn and you almost have to beat it into them, which would be uh, running the second team offense against the first team defense, beat it into them that, Hey, throwing the ball away is not a loss. That's not a losing yeah. play. Folding a bad hand is, is going to keep you in the game longer than going all in with eight with, you know, Eight two offsuit. Yeah, Texas hold them. How, how's your poker skills, Nick? I'm a blackjack guy. Hmm. Good at it. You win <sighs> well, some money at the table. You, you you win some, you lose some. Okay. The important part is you keep playing. Get back on the horse. That's right. Keep swinging, <laughs> like the Florida yeah. baseball team. Hmm. Tough. Uh. We jinxed them. Yeah, last we week. don't need to spend much time on them this week. Literally, 
came on and said they could get a sweep uh, this weekend. They got swept. So oh, um, I was right about sweeping. Uh, and then didn't follow that up well against Florida State, and now they're uh, back home against South Carolina this weekend. Very important series uh, that they'll look to get back on track with, Nick. Yep, minimum. Minimum have to win two games this week. Um, after this, you go uh, to Vanderbilt, to Arkansas. Then you get Tennessee and Kentucky, and Kentucky is 11-1 and one, um, in SEC play. So Florida absolutely – has to win this series. They've been great at home. I think they've won 13 straight, 14 straight home series uh, dating back to last year. Um, so massive weekend. If you can sweep, that's great, but you absolutely have to get at least two of three. No doubt. And Nick will have coverage there as well as obviously the spring game on Saturday. We will be all hands on deck from a football standpoint, from a recruiting standpoint. So make sure that you are locked in with Gators Online. Again, we have a new promo going. If you are not subscribed to our site, go to sign up, use the promo code UF1, and you can get two months of access for just a dollar. So uh, a lot of coverage, of coverage that we've got coming that you will not want to miss. And as you know, once uh, spring is over, the transfer portal opens, and uh, – Things get to get crazy on that side of things. Uh, never stops, Nicholas. Yeah, no, never stops. It, uh, just a few days uh, after the spring game, the portal will open. A um, couple reminders for the portal. Uh, portal opens the 16th. We'll stay open through the 30th. Um, if there's coaching changes, hopefully there are not to be coaching changes this late, um, you know, that you would get an extra some extra time there. But – uh, you cannot transfer within the SEC and have eligibility. You can do it, but you would be ineligible to play um, this year. Now, it would be interesting to see someone in the SEC just do it and then challenge the league and, like, yeah, sue the league go. in court. Yeah. Um, that'd be interesting. Um, but it, it, I think the SEC teams want that to be the case um, so they're not cannibalizing each other. <laughs> in April. Um, so you cannot transfer within the sec and be eligible for the next season. Um, and, um, you can, once you're in the portal, that, that 14 day window is just for players to get in the portal. So you don't have to sign everybody within those first two weeks. Uh, and we've mentioned, actually, I'm going to have a story coming out, so we're not going to mention, uh, the positions that I think they're needed. (laughs) If you go back or if you are a, if you are a dedicated listener or a subscriber, you know the positions I was about to say, uh, but I'll go more in depth uh, in a story here that will come out uh, after the spring game. Yep, and if you're taking advantage of that promo code, you'll read it because uh, we'll have a lot of coverage from that. We'll also have coverage from Florida's first round of official visitors uh, on the basketball side of things uh, with the portal. Uh, so make sure you guys stay locked. Enjoy the spring game on Saturday. We'll be back next week to talk about all that went down, uh, but make sure you also tune in to our rapid reaction right after the game. Uh, We'll join you guys from the Swamp to let you know what we thought right after the Gators go at it in the orange and blue game. For Nick Del Torre, I'm Zach Albaverde. We'll see you guys on Saturday.